Cooper's here. Cooper's here. Cooper's our guest. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um. <laughs> okay, it sounds good. Okay. My turn to kick it off? Mm-hmm. Okay. And three, and two, and one. Welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from feminism to women empowerment and everything in between. You are joined by your co-hosts, which are Kenzie Meekbeck and Megan Hohart. Yay! Welcome to the pod. Ken, how was your week? It was good and tiring. So on Monday, we recorded. Um, Tuesday. We recorded on Tuesday? Oh, yeah. We recorded on Tuesday. I edited Wednesday. So obviously, I went to work all week. Um, Edited Wednesday. Thursday night, I actually relaxed because I was like tired from traveling and just felt busy all week um, with Chelsea. And we just kind of chilled out. And then on Friday, I went out and about in Bellevue with my brother-in-law's little brother, Jacob, and his girlfriend, Jackie. And we went out about in Bellevue, which is a suburb out of Seattle. And um, it's kind of like its own city. It's its own city. Bellevue is big. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But it's like in the greater Seattle area. Definitely. Kind of like DFW. Yes. It's like the Fort Worth of Dallas. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. Or Tacoma. <laughs> I don't know. Tacoma might be more. Yeah, because Bellevue's fancy. Bellevue is fancy, but it's smaller than Tacoma, right? Mm. I think a little bit. I don't know. Tacoma really doesn't have much. Oh, really? Um, but Bellevue is fancier than da- than um, Seattle. Oh, yeah. It's bougie. It's very bougie. Um, but it's it's nice to go to. Um, mm-hmm. it's expensive though. And then, um, so yeah. And then last night I went out to a karaoke bar where it was dead and it was pretty fun. I did not sing though. Um, just had a beer and then just kind of watched Stranger Things at home. Perfect. So, and then went to brunch today. You did? Yeah. I had eggs Benedict. Yum. Mm-hmm. How was your week? My week was really good. Um, during the week, just busy at work, love my new job, love my career change. And then yesterday, lots of yoga. And then today, I went to the Buddhist temple that we were talking about last week. That's amazing. Should I ask you about it or should we do an episode on it? Um, what if I just give you like a really high level and then we'll do a full episode on it? Okay. High level, high level. High level, good service. Um, the one that I found, because I was doing research during the week to see about different Buddhist temples in Seattle, and this was the only one I could find where there was a, like a legit service. All of the other temples I found were would have like hour-long meditations, but not necessarily a service. And I'm looking for that service to learn more about Buddhism and to learn more about the community. And so that's why I went to this one. So they do a hour meditation starting at nine and then the service starts at 10. And this one is from the Japanese origin. Oh, cool. So there was a lot of, um, it was an English service, but we would sing songs in Japanese and chant chants in Japanese. And then Mm. the English translation was underneath it. So I would read the English translation. So I knew what we were saying. Yeah. And then did you know how to say the Japanese words. They give like the pronunciation of it. So oh. you could, you but could in like, it. in like English first, they give it like, I don't understand, uh, their writing. Yep. So they give like the pronunciation in English. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then you can just sound it out. Oh, cool. And then underneath that is the actual English word. So that way you know what you're saying. And so they would tell you beforehand, we're reading page 73. So I went and read what I was going to be saying. So that way I knew. And then we, it was kind of more like a chant than a song. And then there was a, I guess you, you wouldn't call him a pastor, but the Buddhist equivalent of a pastor. And he gave a message and it was a good message. What was the message? The message was about, um, following your Dharma and in that means following your life path And in kind of the theme of it was that in the Buddhist Dharma or in the Buddhist path, there is no tomorrow. So like 
it's all about living in the present Mm -hmm. and all about being in the here and the now and not saying, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do that or tomorrow, you know, putting stuff off to the future and kind of reframing the mind to say there is no tomorrow. That's cool. So you live the best life. Yes. Right now. Yes. That's awesome. Well, that sounds great. So we're definitely going to do that and do an episode on it. But today, speaking about peaceful things and peaceful spiritual items, we are going to be explaining more of the peaceful. I know we like hit on how we became the peaceful truth. So to reiterate, the peaceful is Megan because she's a yoga instructor and she's very zen and Uh, The truth comes from me as a journalist. So today we wanted to dive deeper into how yoga empowers uh, Megan as a woman. That's what we're going to be talking about. So first, do you want to talk about like how you first like found out about yoga? Like what kind of led you to it? So it was all the way back in high school, senior year of high school. My best friend Charlotte and I were like, oh, let's go to a gym and go to a yoga class because her mom is super into yoga. And so we were just like, "Okay, let's just try it. And so we went to a class at a gym and not to like down classes that are at gyms, but they tend to be more physically focused rather than like spiritually focused. So um, but this one, they were doing like all these weird breaths and they were oming and me and Charlotte were like, this is so weird. Like, this is <laughs> like, get me out of here. Why did we do this? We were like 17. So, I mean, just picture yourself at 17 and what that looked like. So, um, we were like, no way. This is so silly. We're just going to stick to the treadmill. We're just going to stick to the elliptical. We're never doing that again for the rest of our lives. That was stupid. And so, flash forward. 10 years, I guess. Um, and Charlotte started to get more and more into it because her mom was so into it. And then I started to get in back into it because I, my mind is so much more open to other possibilities than your mind at 17. I think everybody can say that. Oh yeah. For most, sure. most people can say at 17, you have a narrow scope and a narrow point of view of what your, what life is. And as you get older, maybe that opens and broadens and you can see things in a different light. Totally. And so then I gave it a second chance, almost not even like thinking about my experience at 17. And I just fell in love with with it. I fell in love with the community aspect of it. My least favorite part of yoga is the physical part of it. (laughs) That's my favorite. So my, um, I, I, I do it because I know it's good for me, the physical part, but there are times when we're holding like these crazy poses where I'm like, I hate this. And I think it's just because, I mean, at parts where it's hard physically for you, do you think that you hate it? Or do you like feeling that like my legs hurt, my muscles are working hard? Do you like the way that feels? It depends. Like if the position just makes me feel like I think it's good for you to feel like this. So it's like a love hate thing. Like when you feel uncomfortable, like when you're kind of like I always forget the names, but like when you're like doing that bend back and lifting up your back and like wheel wheel. And I feel like I could queef. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That part I feel uncomfortable with, but like. No, I think like the strength is good. Sometimes I hate it when um, it's like I accidentally went to a hot yoga place once, not knowing it was hot. And uh, it, was, it was, I do not like the smell of sweat and like bodily fluids kind of freak me out. So it's like, no, this is gross. Yeah, I do not do hot yoga. No way. Mm-mm. I think it's in each of us if we like the heat or not. And for me and my body, it just doesn't work. I don't mind the heat. I mind the smell of other people. And there were and there were just like so many people people dripping and like we were like right next to each other. I was like, God, don't let sweat fall on me. Don't let sweat fall on me. So one of the people that I listen to on the radio, um, she's super into yoga and but more for the physical workout of it. 
And so she'll go to hot yoga. And she said that she had her water bottle open and the room was so crowded. And this man that Mm -mm. was right in front of her was doing like, I don't know, three like a dog or something. Mm -mm. And as he lifted his right leg, a drop of sweat fell from his big toe and landed right in her water bottle. The the water bottle's done (laughs) at that point. It's over. It's over with. (laughs) So, yes, my favorite part of yoga is the breath work, the meditation, the spiritual aspect of it. I love reading about the history. I love um, the community. I love all of the friends that I've made through it. And the physical part I do because I know that it's good for me and I know and it can combine breath and movement. And I know that that is good for me. And then in Shavasana, after I've done a physical practice, I know that what I did was a positive, a positive impact on my life. For sure. For sure. Um, okay. So you got into yoga and now that you're into it, um, do you feel like, how do you feel empowered by it? How does it empower your daily life and that sort of a thing? I think it empowers my daily life kind of it helps open my mind I know we've talked about that a little bit but I feel like I'm more accepting of people who are different than me um and I don't know if that was always the case in my past oh okay um I feel like I've always been um I don't think that I was a mean girl or I wouldn't class myself classify myself in that way but maybe if people were different than me um maybe if they different backgrounds different religions different sexual orientations I feel like I would have been kind to them in the past but I feel like my mind now is so open to it that I don't even blink an eye at it do you get what I'm saying totally yeah, completely. And so for other women trying to get into it, how how would you recommend starting off? Like what levels of classes do you recommend um, and that sort of a thing? I would recommend starting off with a beginner series and most studios offer beginner series. Um, so be on the lookout for those. They'll just break down the poses for you so well. And the worst part is, is when you don't go to a beginner series, you go to say a level one or you know, something that's not too strenuous still though, they're not going to break down the poses for you. And so you can do down dog all day just by looking at the person next to you and trying to copy it, but it's totally different in each person's body. And so you may be doing something wrong that if you keep on doing over and over and over incorrectly could hurt you in the long run. So beginner series, definitely. Awesome. And so you mentioned that it brings out you like the fact that it brings out your spirituality and your openness. Can you kind of describe what principles establish that within yoga? I mean, like there's the third eye, the Dharma, like what specifically brings out that energy that you like? And can you kind of deeply or more in depth explain those different aspects of one's spiritual empowerment and how specifically yoga does that? Yep. So, I think that a lot of my practice is always coming back to the breath. And I think that um, in our society and in our day and age, we don't even notice us ourselves breathing. Like that's just something that we don't even think about. And in the middle of the day, if you feel flustered, stressed out, whatever it may be, if you just take one breath and notice it, it can completely wipe the slate clean or help wipe the slate clean to start off on a different foot. So that's, I know that's not technically spiritual, but just coming back to the breath is always big for me. As far as spirituality goes, um, knowing I have always believed in a higher power, um, but my thought of a higher power has changed drastically in the past couple of years. And I think that Recognizing that all religions or people who are spiritual, I think that we're all talking about the same thing and recognizing that there is a divine light in each person can really make a difference. So when I 
there are people in this world that I don't get along with. And there are people in this world that I don't agree with their opinions. And we've mentioned some of the people in the public eye that we don't agree with. But if we step back and say, okay, I recognize that I do not agree with this person's opinions or what, what this person is doing, but realizing that they still have a spark of divinity in them, as we all do, can really connect us. And that also opens up, you know, me being more open to people that are completely different than me and um, saying, hey, this person is completely opposite than me in every single way, shape or form but I still recognize that they have a goodness in them. Very cool. Now, as a yoga teacher, just to explain to people who have never gotten into it, maybe people that are curious um, just to learn more, or maybe they're beginners like me who don't know too, too much, but enjoy it. Um, what are like, so there's like vin vinyasa, mm -hmm. and then there's other different types. Can you go through the different types? And then after that, will you explain what you specialize in as a yes. yoga teacher? So vinyasa flow, um, vinyasa can be translated as a combining movement to breath. So it's going to be a quicker paced flow where each movement, the teacher is going to say, inhale here, exhale here. So you like those classes. That's um, Vinyasa is my favorite. Mm -hmm. So each, each pose that you do should be synced with a breath. Um, and so that's going to be a more sweaty class, most likely, um, more cardio based. The other type is Hatha and this, um, can be really different depending on each studio. But the way that I learned it was that you, it's a more of a strengthening class. So you'll be holding the poses, warrior one, warrior two, down dog. Maybe I should go to a few of those so I can yeah. better myself in vinyasa. <clears throat> So then you would be holding those poses for longer periods of time. And so it still burns and you're still like working up sweat and heat, but it's not as cardio driven because you're not moving as much, but you're holding, I mean, warrior two for a long time to the point where you're like, get me on this pose. So it's still physical, but just, um, for lengthier holds and you're not as much combining each movement needs a correlated breath um and then there's yin yoga which you've probably never done i do it very rarely um but in yin yoga you're holding poses for a really long time but they're not strengthening poses they're um i don't really know that much about yin but you're holding these poses and you're supposed to feel something in like the fascia and in the connective tissues of your body what's fascia fascia it's like this you can kind of think of it like what holds you together it's kind of like a gel inside the gel is the wrong word for it it's like a connective tissue that connects all of the body and it's kind of like an overlay over the skeleton over the organs and so you need to hydrate it and you need to move it and so drinking water hydration moving it so it doesn't get like stuck um it is good for you and so in yin yoga you hold these poses for a long period of time um <clears throat> But it's not necessarily relaxation mm. because restorative yoga, you're also holding poses for long periods of time. But in restorative yoga, it's all about releasing, relaxing, rejuvenating. And so you're holding these poses, but you're completely supported by all the props. And so um, that's that's what I teach. And um, although I feel I, like I'm a student of vinyasa, um, I do not like to teach vinyasa. I only like to teach restorative. Yes. So why restorative? Why do you like that? I feel like I have so much more control over the class whenever I teach restorative. When I teach vinyasa, I can plan all day. I can put in hours of work into planning, making sure the class runs smoothly. But then, I don't know. A pregnant person comes to class or a person who's never, never done yoga before comes to class, as well as a person who's done yoga for 30 years and is the most fit person you've ever seen. Like just such a wide range of people come to the class that your plan goes completely out the door. Yeah. And so you're like, I just spent hours coming up with this and it's was a waste of time. 
<laughs> and so, so that's why I don't like teaching vinyasa. With restorative, people know what they're coming for. Pe- most of the time, people that come to restorative class know what they're getting themselves into. And um, it doesn't matter what physical shape you're in. You know, you can be a brand new student or you can be practicing for 45 years. We're still going to be holding these meditative poses. So, Meg, what inspired you to, like, you could be be a happy yoga student your whole life and be super into it and just take classes and just do that. But what made you and inspired you to make that decision to go from a student to a teacher? I think that what inspired me is that I wanted to get deeper into the practice. And so you going to studios and you going to those classes, you'll get a good workout. You'll get a good breath practice. You'll get a good meditation. But actually understanding the roots of yoga and understanding the backstory behind it, how it came to America, who brought it here, what the practice is like in India, what the practice is like in other countries, the history, all that good stuff, you really need to go to a teacher training to get that because you're not going to get that, you know, in an hour, 15 minute class that you go to for, even if you go four times a week, you're not going to get that. Right. And so that's what inspired me to go. And I didn't necessarily think that I was going to be a teacher. I just wanted it for my own self and my own practice. And Now I am a teacher, um, but I don't know. I think that I'm only going to teach restorative and I'm going to be pickier about it because it's not like I, it's not like yoga teachers are living the high life, making all the money. Um, So it's something that I do for myself and that I do to bring yoga to people who maybe are brand new to it or who need that hour and 15 minute relaxation, whatever it may be, and that I can help out other people's lives, you know, even if it's just once a week. Very cool. So what are your future goals? I thought of this question just now. What are your future goals? Like you mentioned once to me going to India, like what are your goals for yourself in yoga? So my goals are to make sure that I do at least some form of yoga every day. And so if it, it's not going to be the physical practice every day, I can guarantee you that it's not going to be that, but maybe it's going to be 15 minutes of meditation when I wake up in the morning and 15 minutes when I go to bed, or maybe it's going to be just noticing my breath for 10 minutes, or maybe it's going to be reading out of the yoga sutras. Um, so that that's my goal for 2018. I also am going to go to India. So, um, that's going to be in November. Mm. I'm going with Rob and Melissa. For sure, for sure. Yeah, like I'm going to put down my deposit probably tomorrow. So that's exciting. That is exciting. And then I, another goal that I'm going to do is I have mentioned that I only like to teach restorative. And I'm still teaching vinyasa on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And although the students are so great and I love them, um, I've committed myself through March. And then at that time, though, I'm really going to take a step back and say, you know, if I if this is giving me more stress than anything, then why am I still doing it? And um, so at the March time frame, I'm going to kind of reassess and say, what's giving me the best in my yoga practice? And if that's not part of it, and if I really am saying to myself, I only like to teach restorative yoga, then in March, I'm going to reevaluate everything and maybe, you know, cut back on a lot because I know I've mentioned to you that I feel like I am pulled in so many different directions that I'm spreading myself too thin. Mm -hmm. And so in March, I'm going to really step back and see how I cannot spread myself in so many different ways and in so many different areas of my life. That's a good idea. Um, So... Can you explain, so yoga is expensive to join yes. like a yoga studio. So can you explain, one, what's the price range typically for newbies and like how you could possibly save money on that? Yep. Yoga is so expensive and it's so unfortunate that, I mean, it's a business too. So it's one of those things similar to religion, similar to churches, you know, that's such a high form of devotion having a church but at the same time you have to have money to run like that's the economy that's what 
the day and age we live in. And so classes, drop-in classes can range anywhere from probably like in Seattle, 17 is probably the lowest I've seen it to $22 Mm -hmm. per class. So that gets so pricey. So ways you can do Groupons Mm -hmm. help out a lot um, as well as um, becoming a member. So in some studios, let's say you've done the Groupon, you've done the, the new student month for like 30 bucks, you know, those super cheap ones that you find. But then after your 30 days as a new student, then the price goes back up. And let's say you still you love the studio and you love the teachers. Um, you can become a member and it's for an entire year and you pay, it's probably like a thousand five hundred dollars. But <clears throat> if you divide that over how many classes you'll take, it's significantly less than seventeen dollars a class. Mm-hmm. If you go every single day, it could be like, I don't know, ten do- eight dollars a class. And so if this is something that you really, really want to do, calculating how many times a day you're going to go, seeing what's worth it. Um, And let's say it's not worth it. Let's say that you only go once a week. Okay, then maybe a 20 class pass is worth it because then that'll get the cost down to $13, $14 a class. Then on the days that you don't go into the studio, you can go to YouTube and YouTube has so many free classes available. With that being said, you have to be really motivated. Mm-hmm. I know that since I don't like the, I'm not going to say I don't like, since the physical practice is my least favorite part, I need I need people and I need the social setting and I need people around me to motivate me. And so being on YouTube, I can just skip out of a post, you know, that I don't want to do. So, um but maybe for some people that are super motivated, that'll work. And you can go to YouTube and Yoga with Adrian's on YouTube for free. All this other stuff is for free. And she puts up videos constantly. So that could also be super cheap. Yes, I might do one of those tonight, actually. And then, okay, so finally, you got some tattoos that kind of are significant like signify your yoga practice and your yoga devotion so can you kind of talk about your tattoos yeah so I probably I have two tattoos that are more in line with my yoga practice one is on my wrist and it's just three like dash marks and those stand for the three things that I need in life to get through anything that may come up and whenever I used to be at a job that maybe wasn't my favorite I could look down at it and say hey guess what life is bigger than this excel sheet that I'm looking at or life is bigger than whatever is coming up in my life right now that isn't the best and so that tattoo is kind of one for like just coming back to the present and coming back and saying hey guess what life is bigger than what you're going through right now however difficult it may be Right. And then the other tattoo that I have is a lotus flower. It stands for um, renewal, rebirth, um, rising out of the mud. Sorry, Annie just joined us. So and Cooper's Cooper growling at us. Not like Annie. <laughs> or growling at Annie. Um, and so lotus flowers are grown out of mud and muck, and out of mud rides, rises beauty. Very cool. Well,. Um, anything else you'd like to say about yoga or anything else you would like to say to our viewers? If you haven't tried it, just try it one time. If it's not for you, that's totally fine. Just try it one time and see what you it think. It feels super go- goofy on the first time. Like it took me several times to, I think, enjoy it. Um, but once I like figured out like how positive of like, of, I hate when people use this word, but I'm going to use it. Well, positive energy. It has like it does have a lot of positive energy. So if that's kind of what you're seeking to bring into your life more, it it might help you out with that and just kind of brings you back. At first, the first couple of classes where you're like, these people are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. How do you stick with it? You just like the workout? Yeah, and I just kept thinking it seems like a very cool concept. I do have an open mind. I feel like pretty much as a person and so um yeah so I kept thinking about it and I was like you know it's good but there was like a few times that I went to class and I just like would giggle because I just like kind of get into the poses and I just think it's funny but um so yeah but overall I liked it 
Good. So what's your positive thing for this week? Um, my positive thing is that we get to go to San Francisco for a work trip, but a fun work trip. That's awesome. Yep. So I leave in like two weekends from now. Cool. And so I've never been to San Francisco. So we're going to the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz and we have reservations to cool restaurants. And so I'm excited. Have you been to San Francisco? Yes, but I was a kid Mm, a long time ago. Yeah, like a tiny bit. Remember it? Ten years old, maybe. Maybe Do you remember the Golden Gate Bridge? No, I think we avoided it. (laughs) Maybe we didn't. I mainly remember Yosemite. We oh. kind of drove up and down that like northern bit of California. Is it northern California? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> People are about to be like, you <laughs> idiot. Um, okay, cool. Um, my positive thing for this week, I think, is I've just been feeling pretty decent this year so far. 2018's treating you nice. Yeah, I'm just feeling very zen and more at peace a little bit. I do have anxious days because I'm naturally a very anxious person um so but overall it's been positive so yeah maybe you're starting to get more into like the groove of living in Seattle and maybe Seattle is starting to feel more like home yes definitely Uh, when I actually I went to Texas although I loved seeing family and friends I was definitely feeling like this was more home so that's good nice good sign improvements um okay so I don't know if you have a quote but I have an idea if you don't have one I don't okay so I was gonna wrap up saying namaste at the end but can you explain first what namaste means yes namaste means I honor the light and love that is in you and is in me and is in everybody in the world Okay. Well, namaste, you guys. Namaste. Okay. We love you. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next week. Bye. Bye.